Hi, I'm Charlene Jorgensen and welcome to Quilting from the Heartland. Today we're going to make the apple core quilt, which happens to be an old traditional design with a lot of country appeal to it. The first one that I'm going to show you is a charm apple core quilt. It's called a charm quilt because every single fabric in it is different. It is a great quilt to utilize scraps up in it and even though you do use scraps you do have to determine how far you want your color range to go. In other words if, there, if you don't want to have any purples in it like I chose not to do in this one you would eliminate it from the whole quilt. You don't want to have one wild or loud fabric uh, which would have a totally different mood from all the rest of the fabrics in it. Also notice that along the outside edge it has a scalloped edge which is totally different from most quilts that we see. It doesn't have a border on this one, it's only finished off with a scalloped edge. Also the quilting design is an orange peel design which I will give you a closer look at a little bit later on in the program. The next one that we're going to show you is done with plaids and stripes. You'll notice when you look at this quilt that the fabrics are not cut on the straight, straight of grain. I found that it takes way too much patience to do it on the straight of grain. In fact, I think that it even has a little more appeal to it if you let it be slightly off grain. Again, I was very careful when choosing the palette for this quilt. I made sure that it was in reds, greens, and a touch of gold throughout the quilt. Again, it has the scalloped edge along the outside edge and the binding that we chose for this one happened to be a plaid binding so that it had a different look along the outside edge. In fact, the binding is cut on the bias which is necessary when working with a curved edge. Also, it is a continuous line orange peel quilting design in this quilt. The one that we're working on today uh, has definitely got the same color ranges in it. I still use the reds, golds, and greens, but it has prints in it rather than only plaids and stripes. It is a Benetex collection of fabric, and I, which I fell in love with, and I like to use uh, fall colors like you see in this quilt. Also, when you look at the border or the edge of this quilt, you'll see that there's a continuous line feather design, which Linda will be showing us how to do on the long arm machine at the end of this program. Well, now I think it's time to start cutting uh, for the charm quilt. And this one, or the apple core quilt, excuse me, this one is not going to be a charm quilt because I'm going to use the same fabrics throughout the whole quilt. Ahead of time, I have straightened the edge of the fabric and I have three fabrics folded in half on top of each other and I have straightened them along this edge. You've already noticed that there's only one shape used throughout the whole quilt and it is the apple core shape. We have put the fabric grips on the back side and that will keep it from sliding when I'm cutting. I will cut the strips wide enough to accommodate that template. We'll actually cut them one, two, three, four and a fourth inches wide and we'll be able to cut then many apple cores at a time. The first cut that I'm going to make, I will go backwards and then forwards. And if you find that your ruler wants to slip for you, you might want to put uh, fabric grips on the back of it and that's something that I maybe should have done before I did this. Now I'm going to move those cut strips onto a smaller mat board and I will bifold them so I can easily turn the fabric as I cut. Making sure now that we have all the layers under the apple core. Just like when I was cutting the strip, the first one will be going backwards and then forward. Now for the inside curve, I just slightly tilt the cutter, just very little bit, and it follows the curve very nicely. 
I do find that working with a small cutter is a lot better than working with a large one when cutting curves. We now have six apple cores all perfectly cut and ready to go into the quilt. For those of you that want to use up nothing but scraps, you can stack many, many scraps on top of each other, on top of a small board, which I find works a lot better. And again, notice how easy it is to use up all those odd shapes of fabric that we have laying around the sewing room. Now before you start sewing your quilt together, you would make sure that you have all of the pieces or all the fabrics cut that you want to use in the quilt. Because with a quilt like this, it's so easy to use up one collection of fabric at the beginning and by the time you get to the end, when you realize you want your quilt bigger, you'll have to start introducing some other fabrics. So make sure that you've got all the pieces cut that you want to use in the quilt before you start sewing. Also something else I forgot to mention in the beginning was that make sure you've washed all your fabric, dried them in the dryer, and then sometimes uh, if I think I'm teaching a beginner I might ask them to starch the fabric again before sewing it together. I find that starch makes it a little bit easier uh, to control the fabric. After all the cutting is done, then I would start arranging them on a flannel board the way that I would want them to go into the quilt. Making sure that you evenly distribute the colors uh, throughout the whole quilt. And maybe I should have cut some gold ones in here. This would be a gold that I would probably want to add and some of the other colors that I showed you in the beginning of the program. Make sure that you have enough colors or enough fabrics so that you, it looks more like a scrappy quilt uh, when you start putting it together. Well, I think I've spent enough time showing you how to cut it because it is a very easy quilt to cut and I would like to spend the rest of my time showing you how to sew it together. I'm going to sew the seams with a scant quarter inch seam allowance and on this particular sewing machine we have the scant quarter inch already uh, programmed into the machine so I don't have to find it on the machine and I will be sewing with cotton thread to match the fabric for content as well as strength. When starting to work with the apple core You'll notice that ahead of time we have little notches on four sides of the uh, apple core. So what you do to get that is you'll fold the apple core in half and cut little tiny notches and make sure that you don't go into the seam line. Make sure they're just deep enough so that you've marked the center all the way around and you would do that with all of your pieces. Now you will start sewing them together into rows. Now the size of your quilt is determined by the number of pieces that go into a row and the, the width I mean is determined by the number of pieces that go into your rows and the length is determined by the number of rows that you put together. So you can stop with this project at any time that you want to. Now, when matching these up, you'll want to match the notch in the center of both the top and, top and bottom, and always work with the concave on top of the convex curve. I will be sewing or using silk pins, and we'll insert a pin right in the center matching up the notch, and now we will move these into a match and we'll insert another pin over here and we'll do the same over here. This is not a difficult design to put together if you take the time to carefully um, 
pin the ends and notice when I started out with the edge here notice how the two edges match up you want to make sure that you start out with that perfect match at the edge also I start out on it with an anchor cloth when I start sewing that way the beginning stitches on my patchwork will be as good as the center stitches sewn I will guide my fabric with a stiletto and as I approach that pin I will pull it out and now I will do the rest of the pinning with the stiletto as I sew and notice how I have the, the sewing machine set so that every time I stop sewing the needle stops in a down position making it possible for me to adjust the fabric each time I stop using the stiletto to, s to slide that fab fabric over to a perfect match we'll just take our time and see how I can hold it in place and the stiletto can go into places where your fingers can't get into We'll just scoot it over we're sewing with about 10 to 12 stitches per inch and I will guide the fabric to the very last stitch with a stiletto now I will sew off onto a second anchor cloth we'll take a look at what this looks like there's our nice uh, perfect curve it doesn't have any tucks or pleats in it notice that I didn't have to clip any of the um, curve when I was sewing it it was all uh, laser cut so that it fit perfectly now when pressing the seam the seam allowance wants to go towards the green piece and I will finger press it so it does go in that direction and see how it just wants to lay that way then you would touch it with a little bit of steam and it'll lay perfectly flat now if if I hadn't followed that seam and guided it with the stiletto the seam allowance would have wiggled back and forth and it wouldn't have been as perfect now we probably would want to add another one over here but that would be repet repeating the same process you would sew with the concave always on top of the convex now let's look at the next step and show you what happens when you start connecting your rows you'll have something that lo looks like this when I turn it over and show you the back side you will notice that the seam allowances have been pressed in opposite directions these two are pressed towards each other always going in the direction that they want to to naturally fall and then notice how these are both going in this direction which is opposite from this one the difficult part about this design is connecting the rows so that they look nice and flat in the finished quilt what we're going to do is show you how to sew partial seams to finish the, the rows. What we're going to do is the seam with the concave on top, or the concave on top, and then I'm going to flip the seam, the row over, and then I'll finish the seams in the other direction. So first we'll start out with this one. To match the intersections, I'm going to pin right on the seam line a fourth of an inch from the edge through the top and through the bottom. And when you snug it up, you'll feel how they just match together or they want to go together because you have the seam allowances going in opposite directions. In fact, we don't even have to stab that one to match it the extra bulk of the fabric will actually match that seam line and then again match the notch just like we did before <laughs> 
and we'll sew this part of the seam. This is called a partial seam, so we're just going to sew from here to there. Now I'm going to start sewing a couple stitches ahead of the seam line. And notice how I don't have to go back here to drop the presser foot. It comes down automatically when I start sewing. And we'll get our stiletto so we can guide the fabric in front of the needle. Slow down when you sew over the pins. And again, making sure that that fabric or the edges are matched up perfectly. If you, like I wanted to say, or said earlier, is if you don't make sure these edges are matched up perfectly, you won't have a nice curve in your quilt. I'll go one or two stitches past the seam line. And we'll cut the thread just by touching the little button on the machine. And now we will show you what that seam looks like. See how that looks? It wants to lay so nice and flat. Now we'll go back and we'll start and we'll do the other part of the seam and when you flip it over always having the concave on top of the convex. Match that center notch and we'll sew in the other direction. Now to make it strong in the corners, we'll start on the other side of the seam, three, four stitches. Don't back stitch because that will just create bulk, but just sew right on top of those previous stitches and continue on. It takes a little more time than some of your other quilts that uh, have all those straight long seams. The fun thing about this one is that everybody thinks it's so difficult and when they've done this and accomplished it, they've done something that a lot of people won't even try to do. Again, when I get to the end, I don't back stitch, just sew off the end and then go on to an anchor cloth. And that's how it's done. Now again, we will finger press so that the seam allowance will want to always go towards the convex or the con yeah, the convex curve. So that will be how it's pressed. Now I won't go on and sew the rest of the seam, but I want to show you what the back side of a roll looks like after it's been pressed. This seam allowance is going this direction and this one is going in this direction. To compromise at this point, I have opened the seam allowance or finger pressed them open so it lays really nice and flat and then come down with a steam iron to hold it in place. And like I said earlier, the size of your quilt is determined by the number of apple cores that go into the rows and the length is determined by the number of rows that you sew together. Now finishing the quilt, uh, let's talk a little bit about that. It's really a fun part of the quilting process. In this one, we have a stencil designed specifically for the apple core. And when you look at this design, you'll see that there are little holes punched at each intersection. Those holes match up with the intersections of your quilt. So what you would do is you'll line up those intersections, take a pin and go through the top, 
and then the rest of them will line up all the way across. I gotta find, there it is. Okay, then you will take a fabric marking pencil and mark through all of these, and that will be your quilting design that you will do with a continuous line on your sewing machine. You do that throughout the whole quilt. The bridges on the stencil are there just for strength. You would connect those lines when you remove the stencil off of your patchwork. Here is a piece that has already been quilted and when you're quilting this one it's a continuous line machine quilting starting on one end and then you would pivot at the other end and work your way back again. And that's what gives you the orange peel design. Now when binding this quilt you would always work with a bias binding and it's a strip of fabric cut two inches wide and when you start out with the binding you would start about this far from the edge and notice how we have started out with a piece of binding cut at an angle like that or a 45 degree angle that way when you finish up with your binding you will have evenly distributed your fabric you would attach your binding to the top of the quilt and you have to make sure that you don't stretch the binding when you're attaching it if you stretch it you will end up with bubbles along the outside edge of your quilt and then it's turned over to the back side and it's tacked by hand. There are so many different ways to finish off a quilt and I was really pleased to see what Linda had done with the quilt that she did for this program. She used a continuous line feather design along the outside edge and that actually framed the whole quilt giving it a final or a um, frame as if it were a picture frame. Also she did something different around each of the apple cores. She stitched a quarter of an inch from the edge on both sides. I hope you've enjoyed watching the apple quilt, apple core quilt go together today.